Hey there, Sam Gossner here with Versilian Studios, just showing a walkthrough of a work in progress SFC creation tool that we're working on. So uh, essentially what you do is you feed in a directory full of the samples that you want. This one we're going to process uh, two different ones today, a marimba and a piano, uh, both with about 250 uh, samples in them. And you give it a few pieces of information, you tell it what you're mapping, and it'll output for you a SFC file that you can then go and modify uh, as desired. So, uh, first, just a quick walkthrough of the interface here. So, uh, first we specify the attack. So, for now, I guess we'll probably put an attack of... Uh, Maybe eight, just to make sure we don't get any clicks in there. Um, and then for the release, we really want a nice full sustain, so we'll probably do 10 seconds. Okay, so then for the normalization, essentially what this does is it takes the number you give it and it divides it up across the uh, velocity layers. So if you have three velocity layers, the quietest velocity layer will get the greatest boost uh, and then from there on up, sequentially less amounts. So for the marimba, we'll do about 18. Uh, this is a, just a very simple normalization. Uh, it works, works decently well. In the future, we want to expand that to be a, a bit more responsive. Uh, the next step is deciding which randomization or uh, round robin method we use. You can either do a straight round robin, which sequentially goes through 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, or a random robin, which goes through a random cycle. So we'll use random robin uh, for this. Just because we don't need a specific pattern, right? And these hits on the, mar on the marimba all sound sort of similar. So that'll be fine for our needs. The next step is selecting what's called a notation dictionary. So this tells the uh, program how to notate the file that we're giving it. So in this case, you navigate to the notation directories inside your thing. And here we go, we have C3 equals 60. Now I'll just go and show you what this means. So the notation file essentially just lists the notation that we're given, right? This is our input parameter in the file name, and then it uh, lists a MIDI key number that results. So for example, uh, with the marimba, we might see the key um, A1 appearing, right? So if it sees A1, it'll know that that is MIDI note number 45. And you can customize these. Uh, you can see I've, I've made a couple defaults in here. So for now we'll use C3 equals 60. Next up we have to load the velocity dictionary in. And the velocity dictionary is sort of similar in, in what it does. It, uh, except in this case it, it gives it priorities of which velocity layer is louder and quieter. So the lower numbers are quieter. And in this case, we can actually use adjectives such as soft, softer, um, medium, loud, louder. And you can always add your own. So if you want to use velocity equals, let's say you could go in and do velocity equals 1 and call that 0. And then you'd go down here and do velocity equals 2 and call that 1. Um, and keep on doing these changes and eventually you save the document and that updates uh, the dictionary when you next load it. Okay, so then the next part is the velocity algorithm. So this controls how it maps the velocity. And for now, uh, we're just going to use a linear one. You don't have to use a dictionary. Uh, if you don't specify one, it'll just use the linear one by default, uh, where it divides up the uh, samples across the velocity spectrum evenly. Earlier I made, just pull this open. Earlier I made one, uh, a custom one. I'll show you how these work.
here's my custom one where it accentuates the lower velocity layers uh, more than the higher ones quite a bit more uh, so that's good if you have an instrument that has let's say three velocity layers and the top one is really loud and you really want to focus on the the middle and lower velocity uh, registers and once again these are always customizable so you can come in make your own and so on so for now we'll just use the the linear system next we need to give it the input folder so here I've actually put it inside the directory. You can have this wherever you want on your computer. Uh, and then from the output file. And the, uh, the rule of thumb for this is you want your output file to be close in directory to the input file. And when you package it, you have to keep the relative positioning. So if you have branching folders, you have to make sure that you include the uh, common branch that unites where the instrument is and the samples are or else it won't work. So we'll just put it in the samples folder for now to be easy and we'll call it marimba.sfc. You don't have to give the ending, it'll automatically add it. Okay, so before we can execute, I need to go in and make sure that the arguments of my file names match the expected arguments. So I'll go into my marimba here, check out the file names. Okay, so we need a key argument. Okay, and we have that. It's in the correct format. We've selected the right format. Uh, now I need to find, okay, is it one of the velocity? Okay, yes it is. We're using adjectives. Uh, that's fine. And I checked, I made sure that the adjectives are listed. Now we need a round robin. Okay, this is where things get tricky. So now we have all these numbers, but they're not in the right format. So that's where a good renaming tool comes in. Uh, so I'm just using a basic one called Oscar's Renamer that allows me to record uh, just simple little macros and also do uh, batch processing. So there's two basic ways we can go about doing this. The first way is we can use a replace. We can search for 01 and replace it with RR1. That's the first option. Um, so I could do this, and I know there's a total of six. Uh, this one also allows me to record a macro of me going in and editing that if I wanted to. I'll just do this since it's more likely. Okay, so I'll do replace all. Okay, now I'll do the same for O2. And if you get really complex, you can actually go in and uh, record um, or design an actual uh, script that will do this operation for you. Almost there. Okay, and I know that there's a total of six maximum in here. So now I just click apply, and it's updated all the files. So we should be good to go. So now cross your fingers, click execute. There we go. Open it up, and here we have our instrument. And here it, it specified our groups, made sure that it has the right random ranges. And it's made sure that if there are any parts that are missing, extra round robins, it's filled them in. So one thing you do need to watch out for is to make sure that the default path is correct. Uh, let's try it out. Okay. So it's loaded it up. Just mute my mic so you can actually hear it. Okay. 
Okay, so that, I'd, I'd say that was a pretty good success. We just created a 247 sample marimba in about maybe five minutes. Let's go on to a bit more advanced case. So, uh, in the next one, we're going to work with this upright piano. And there's a number of things that I haven't, that haven't been incorporated into this uh, tool that we will need to create for ourselves. So this will be a good chance to see how to edit and create our own dictionaries. So, uh, the first thing you'll notice is that for our notes, we just have these integers, right? And the good news is I know what those integers are. These are the steps in a whole tone scale going up from A. So I can go in and create our own notation dictionary. Now you may be going, whoa, this is going to take forever, but it's pretty straightforward. So let's just create a duplicate here. Name that quickly. Uh, so we'll do piano whole tone A, just to keep track of what it is. So we know our, our first note is 000, and that is equal to 21. And I can go through and, and delete these or whatever. And we know our it goes up to 44. Okay. So center I'd go through and I'd, I'd uh, change this up. So I go Oop. had an error there. Fortunately, my speed typing is not as good as it used to be. There we go. And I'd go through and I'd just label these. So I might uh, just do the We'll, we'll just uh, do that far. And so on. Um, but just to save time, I've made one of these already. I'll just go and open it out here. These are piano whole tone. All ready to go. Just what we were right doing right there. Okay, so what do I need to do? So I need to select the piano whole tone. Random Robin, attack, I want that to be point. I think point 0.5 worked out pretty well earlier. Um, and I want this to be pretty big. Um, let's see, okay. So the next step is making sure that our other arguments work. Okay, ah, so we have a dynamic layer system here. So now we need to adjust our velocity dictionary here with the new labels. We have dynamic one, dynamic two, and lastly dynamic three. So we save that. If we want we can reload it and we'll need to make sure that we have our upright piano selected and we'll create our file here. I just ran this earlier. So let's see, now we'll try to execute. Okay, let's check. Okay, 
Uh, make sure that our directory is correct. Okay, looks good. Now, load it into ARIA. Good, okay. Just mute my mic. Cool, so there you have it. That is creating SFC files in this new tool. Let me know what you think, if you have any questions, uh, and I hope you have a good day.